1v1, like even sacrificing his lane at times Ooh. to be uh, as quit? I think he's dead. Oh! Yep. Jojo Pune with the solo kill in mid lane. Despair on Fudge. Quid still getting jumped on though. He's trying to get away. He escapes and just barely survives thanks to Ayla and the shield. Mob comes in over the top, but Sniper's already in the dirt. River tries to flash over the wall. Crescent Guard to knock a target back away. Fudge is still gonna just kite him out and Vulcan gets the kill. C9 pick up two. Wow, this is Senna. Nice shot, guys. Hey, hit, hit, hit. We need to hit the dying. Berserker. Oh, Berserker, not again, please. We need to peel our minions. <laughs> guys, let's end the game. Get the minions in. Hit, 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 hit. Yeah, we got it, we got it. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Two more, guys. My vigil doesn't hit a damn thing. Blabber's spinning. C9's winning. And there ain't nobody wow. on 100 Thieves gonna stop him. Holy cow. Four dead bodies in 100 Thieves colors. <laughs> and that entire sequence was C9 ego. Yep. They didn't need to do that to win this game, but they wanted to do that to win this game. Nice flash. Nice shot. Look, 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 look. Yeah, yeah. Look here, look here. Oh my god, Jojo Pune. Oh my god, Jojo. Okay, both not over. Okay, both not over. Okay, good job, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not over, guys. It's okay. Go and get overconfident, guys. Now, Jojo teleports back in with items and they go for more. Ayla is the one getting jumped on first. The Alistar is pretty tanky. Not tanky enough. Vulcan's Whoa. got the kill here at the start. Blabber keeping alive with the ulti, but he's about to drop. Shutdown goes over to Quid. Fudge but Rivers on the run. Berserker's still shooting. And Fudge has made his way in from the back. The Dominus is ready to rock and roll. And Berserker takes down River. C9 comes out into the playoffs and makes a statement. The statement being they're ready to play. Wait, just, just kill them, just kill them. Yeah, yeah, yeah kill them. Nice, C9 is back. Nice job, guys. Oh, C9 is so good, guys. Clean win, boys. <laughs> Welcome to Waiting Room, and big surprise, Fudge is joining us for Waiting Room. Hello. How'd yesterday go, man? Um, we got pretty lucky that uh, the enemy jung uh, not the enemy jungler, also the enemy jungler was kind of ending, but their drafts were awful. <laughs> Uh, I think every single game um, and put us in pretty good positions a lot of the time the way they would get leads was like their top laner would get pretty far ahead they would bring their support and jungler to top lane and get ahead during grub timer um, but all three games they had a losing top side by that point and yeah. they played Aatrox the first two games which I feel like is a little bit of a bait pick I think people are just picking it because you know, they see Zeus playing it, yeah. and <laughs> you see Zeus playing it, and he's carrying every game. So. Yeah, we got some highlights from your series yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys arriving to the studio, and Robert then, the uh, and then oh. Hunter Thieves didn't show up. So that was the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just, this is it. This is all that's a good. Pulled. That's a good recap, right? Yeah. There. <laughs> How do you feel about the games? Because those were, I would say, the cleanest games you guys had all split. It mm -hmm. felt like. Um, I think we were very disciplined in our gameplay. Like, we were always saying, like, oh, they need to fight us here. Mithy was bringing a big focus during scrims on how we would always... A weakness of us is that we would always take fights when the enemy team needed to take fights um, and just, like, fight them even though we didn't need to. We could just go sideways. Yeah. And we could just back off and recall and get vision again and play the map again. We'd just fight them anyway because maybe we can win, you mm -hmm. know, type of thing. And, mm -hmm. and like, uh, I think we did a lot of... Uh, good plays where we just back off, we just go sideways, we just um, wait for our cooldowns, and don't really take any risks, just go to the objectives, and I think that's a lot of the reasons why we were able to like close out games cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, the early games, I think, I mean, generally we've always been pretty good in early game, I feel yeah. like, and yeah. 100 Thieves have been kind of weak in early game in general. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the early games weren't too big of a surprise. Um, they were obviously like kind of just griefing a lot, a lot of the time. They were just giving us random kills, taking just bad fights, um, and then... I think our comps in all three games were pretty good at converting early game leads into mid game and late game. So. Yeah, I want to pull up the bracket for the rest of the playoffs because you guys are in a good position. Yeah. Can't be better, actually, at this yeah, point because you're be in the winner's bracket final. You're going to face the winner of today's match next week on Saturday. The loser Maybe. of today's match is going to drop down and play Dig. Saturday, Sunday is going to be Energy 100 and Dig plus the loser of FlyQuest TL. Uh, I I have a stat question for you. Oh, stats. Yeah, you have to tell me. You have to bad. tell me this player. Yep. Okay. Since joining the LCS in 2021, this player has either won the LCS or been eliminated by the team who won the LCS. That must have been us, no? Which player? Me. 
Yes. <laughs> the LCS yeah. runs through fudge since that's, the that's true, actually. Damn, that's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I figured it out this morning. <laughs> it's been true for Blabber since 2019 summer. Damn. That's a long yeah. streak. That is a very There's long a little streak. randomness in there, yeah, too. Like yeah. when EG won, they beat you in like the fourth place game yeah, or something, true, but then they true, technically true, true. did win. But it's. Uh, it's been pretty cool. It's nice for your ego, you know. You're like, oh, well, at least yeah. we lost to the best team. It's fine. Yeah. And, and you now know. you can start saying, like, the LCS runs through me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when we lost to T1 and, like, in, like, at Worlds and then T1 just won Worlds. It's like, yeah, it's hanging. Yeah. You know, it's only T1 won Worlds. It's fine. That's true, actually. <laughs> I never thought of it like a player being instantly thrusted into, like, championship expectations. <laughs> <laughs> That's be a lot of stress just in general in your career, right? I mean, I think the start of it was pretty stressful just because I felt like I wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, I was on the, one of the best rosters, so the expectation on my team was high. However, on me was, like, too much, I think, for my skill level at the time. Mm. I think nowadays, uh, expectation on me is kind of low because I've just been playing poorly throughout the past couple, like, splits, honestly. I don't feel like I've had really good performances the past couple splits. I've been playing okay, but not really up to my level that I could be, especially, mm -hmm. like, I feel like 2022 summer I was playing really well, um, and I didn't really play to that level in the past, like, year and a half. And I feel like now I've been a lot more on like a, just like, you know, just a learning mindset. I've been like sort of just got humbled a little bit and just went back to square one. And I feel like I've been learning a lot and been working really, really hard and on top of everything. So I've gotten back to a form where I feel a little bit more, I feel more confident oh, yeah. that I can play well. You just mentioned your first split, and Emily and I were talking mm -hmm. about this yesterday during the, the 100 Thieves game because we were comparing, like, your first split in the LCS versus mm -hmm. Sniper's first split mm -hmm. in the LCS. I think I saw that, yeah. Yeah, we had this memory of, like, oh, yeah, Fudge had a rough first split. Exactly. Yeah. But then we looked at your stats, and it's like, and he led top laners in KDA, and he was a champion. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it's weird lo lo looking back. I figured it out because I was I was also looking at it. I think part of it was lock-in yeah. tournament performance. It was lock -in. Like, I think, <laughs> in my mind, that just blends into the first, yeah. like, exactly. few weeks. Because your trajectory of rapid improvement then, uh, like, culminated in you being one of the best performing mm -hmm. players on C9 MSI. Right. Uh, but I was like, oh, I'm just blending lock-in tournament. Because I'd for say sure. lock-in tournament was definitely, like, your roughest oh, yeah. time for the, sure. That was the worst performance <laughs> of any tournament I've been in, for sure. Um, and, and I understand why people think my spring split was bad because obviously my lock-in tournament was like such a big memory for everybody that you can't forget that. You know? like, <laughs> just overshadows it, You can't it, forget yeah. that. Going down 60 CS and every single matchup, <laughs> both sides, it's just, it's just crazy. Uh, okay, Fly Quest is playing today. They're yes. up against TL, and they are the first-place team. Hunter Thieves was the second-place team, but we... We need to talk about them now. So here's some of their stats throughout the split. They were second place in gold of 14. I think Cloud9 was actually first, but pretty much everything here is either first or second. Their Baron power play is insane. They have a huge Baron percentage. Basically, this tells me they're just very good at securing objectives and turning those objectives into victory. What's been your read on the strengths of FlyQuest so far, the split, Fudge? Um, I think they're very like cohesive. I think they play really, really well as a team. And it obviously shows in their objective like planning and just getting ahead getting all the objectives. I think they their lane is obviously a pretty good and they're mm -hmm. not like losing lane. They, they don't have any weak laners, but I wouldn't say they're like necessarily winning the game through their lanes. It's more so through just playing well as a team. And I think they understand like comp and how to play as a team, which is obviously through their top side is very experienced. So I can understand mm -hmm. why they're just like winning games through objectives. Yeah, we have uh, some historical data here. We'll run it as we talk about these two teams about FlyQuest's recent playoff performances as well as TL's recent playoff performances and it's been a weirdly up and down org like to think <laughs> in these last five years of history the best performances are actually the power of evil Santorin rosters from Damn. 2020 with the back-to-back -back second yeah. yeah and then last year their spring was super hype they almost got first place in regular season with the Prince Vikla speaker roster yeah oh, Jesus to not even qualifying in summer completely rebuilding the roster and now at least having high aspirations in this upcoming playoffs like for me in this one it does feel like a long time ago it does not feel like it's been <laughs> since 2019 because there's been so many different faces this roster in particular we expect it to be top three for sure yeah um but not consistently first since the beginning of the regular season uh they have just been coming in strong whenever you talk to them as players like their most vocal members being inspired and Bwipo have been very clear of what their goals are behind the scenes so it makes sense that they're now like playoff favorites that's kind of been called into question since like the week six just now that teams are starting to catch up but 
it makes sense that now they've started to right those wrongs and they will not be certainly not be as bad as last split. That is not going to happen, or at least last year as a whole. It's because they keep yeah. taking those wellness shots on stage. Yeah, exactly. I, I was, I was <laughs> looking Alert. at Jensen's face. I think when you look at the roster construction of this FlyQuest roster, it mirrors, um, and I think uh, and, uh, something that Andrew Barton tried to do on EG, I believe, mm, yeah. one of the GMs that came to FlyQuest, uh, where you have the really young bot lane, Masu Huzuruki Busio in his second year, and then a very experienced topside to kind of guide them through that. You see kind of shades of similarities between these two rosters, and I think we've credited in the past 100 Thieves for in season, yeah. not yesterday, uh, drafting really well around the players and understanding what they want to do. I think FlyQuest has also done that, like especially with their top side. I believe there's only been one game where they've been on red side that they haven't saved R5 counterpick for Whippo mm -hmm. um, just due to his champion pool. So I think the way that they've approached roster building and this game, uh, like their in-game picks has been really good. Yeah, also a matchup that is going to be at the front of everyone's mind is Jensen versus APA. Ooh. Yeah, I feel like because it does seem like Jensen has been having a lot of good games and APA has been having a lot of poor games. So this is one of those things that would need to change or go neutral if Team Liquid wants to have a chance in the series. Fudge, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Um, I mean, I think Jensen is clearly better, to be honest with you. I mean, APA, I think the advantages he has is that he has, like, random picks that people aren't used to playing against, like mm. Ziggs, Aurelian, Sol, I think he's really good at. And the champions he's shown before that you have to be really careful about in draft, it's possible his teammates will get better, you know, draft situations because they'll be forced to bend those out because mm. they're not really used to playing against it. You can't really get practiced against those other champions in scrims. Yeah. Um, just because no one else plays it. So... He very clearly has a good champion pool that's able to be playing a lot of things. Funnily enough, when Summit memed him for being a Ziggs one trick, um, <laughs> I think it's actually kind of a, an advantage that he's able to play those kind of champions. Um, and now I think he's not too bad at the other champions. Um, but I do think Jensen overall as a player is quite, quite better. So like, talk about Jensen a little bit because you played with him. Uh, he has this a very similar identity where he doesn't get much draft resources, doesn't get much resources in game, but he's playing mages and he will be there for team fights. Like. How do you feel like that adds to a team just in general? How it helped you guys? Um, I think it's nice to play with Jensen because he plays the same type of champion. I mean, there's pros and cons, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't really play like melee champions a lot, yeah. but he does play control mages almost every single game. And I think you get used to playing with control mages. So no matter what mage he's on, he's, we're sort of going to be playing in the same way uh, as a team comp. And I think it's really easy to practice with. Um, plus, he's just really consistent. He always knows his matchups. He knows all the mage matchups very well, and he's never losing lane really hard. Even internationally, mm -hmm. I, I felt like he was playing his mage matchups pretty well yeah. when I was playing with him. And he's always like understanding team fights very well. He understands what he needs out of his jungla in early game. Communicates very well around that, and I think he's just a really consistent player. He's never really the player that's going to like hard carry a game for you yeah. and take those big risks like JoJo, for example. Mm -hmm. But he's also not going to be a player that will ever like really lose you a game. What's interesting, so of course, just to make note of it, we saw it on the screen. Bye bye, Zir. Yeah, Zir. disabled for this one. But <laughs> it's actually part of a larger topic. So Scully in the chat was asking about like kind of the difficulties uh, throughout the regular season with how many large patches there were. That you, there's always a constant change of what you're actually picking between like, oh, AD Twisted Fate this time around or Udyr or this. So like, so like, tell me about just how it feels like going into playoffs because you've been through this process so much. You're on one patch. You know what point you're going up against. Like. How easy does that feel, like, in comparison to how, especially this regular season has been? It's super comfortable. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> that's, all, that's all it is. Like, playoffs is actually, like, supposed to be more stressful, but in reality, you're not having to learn a bunch of new champions, and you don't, you already understand all the matchups that are going to happen. You know your exact opponent. You know what he plays. Yeah. It's, like, super easy to prepare for, you know, draft and just your opponent in playoffs compared to regular season. Yeah, like you said, a different patch. You don't even know what's good into what. You don't yeah. know these <laughs> matchups. You're playing a new matchup on stage you've never played before, like, half the time. And it's just a bunch of random, like, losses because you don't understand a matchup and you die level three or something. And it's, yeah. it, it's just, it kind of feels bad, but at the same time, it, it brings more, like, you know, fun. So... Uh, I prefer playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I have to say. I prefer playoffs. <laughs> well, I feel like that's always true when you feel like, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but 
if you feel like your team is better or you are better, yeah. you always want the environment to be as controlled as possible. For sure. For sure. Because then you think, as a, well, if I'm better anyway, yeah. we'll eliminate the barriers, you'll be able to win. Other matchup we want to keep an eye on is Inspired versus Umpty and Emily. I know you have a long history of uh, following Umpty around. What are your thoughts yeah, on this head-to-head? -head? Uh, Umpty still plays exactly like he did <laughs> in LTK. <laughs> Um, I think he has the same strengths as a player, and I also think he has the same weaknesses as a player, and that a lot of that comes from his early invading. He loves to be in his opponent's jungle. He loves to invade. When it works out, it works out really, really well. Um, they've done a lot, especially when Impact has something that pushes. Obviously, we pointed out the Udir, but anytime he's actually able to push up his lane, uh, make the most of his wave state, it works out really well on topside, specifically for Teal. Um, but then obviously, if you go for a lot of these risky plays, maybe his mid isn't pushed up well and he doesn't have a lot of coverage. Maybe his lanes just aren't pushing in general. Um, and that can cost them plays uh, because he takes a lot of risks. By contrast, I think Inspired is really, really calculated about when he takes risks. And even though some of his statistics across the board might not look um, as like, high or low as umpties, he's so consistent uh, and he has a really, really good understanding of where he needs to be. He's really good in particular at responding to aggressive plays from his opponents, I yeah. think. Um, which uh, obviously, I think in this matchup, puts umpty at a disadvantage if he doesn't have that support from his lanes. I never really felt like umpty was very good at playing with his lanes other than impact. I think impact, mm. maybe it's just because impact's always like doing well. I yeah. don't know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it always feels like they, they play very well together. They, they seem to play to either gank a lane. They know when they want to gank. They know when he needs to be top. Um, whereas I feel like when he's playing with APA, it feels like they're running mid and they don't know exactly how they're going to 2v2 on this wave. And they're just like throwing their spells out, not really coordinated at all. It feels a little bit weird when I watch um, him play with his other laners compared to impact. Um, and maybe maybe that's just due to impact winning lane more than, more than his other laners, but I feel like it might be a problem with the, I feel like Inspired Jensen are, are quite coordinated and they know how to play very well together. And like you said, I think Inspired doesn't really take a lot of risks, especially in his early game pathing. I think he's very like consistent mm -hmm. and doesn't really do anything crazy, which can be an advantage and can be a disadvantage sometimes because you're more predictable. But um, I do think that FlyQuest will likely just consistently win uh, throughout the series. Mm. That'll definitely be something to track. This series is only 12 minutes away. But in the meantime, FlyQuest did release a piece of content to get their fans hyped for this playoff run. Take a look. Well, listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories. They do not want me. Life finds a way crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Oh, well, there it is. These two young players winning the award of most valuable prospect. And he just melts him with a shockwave from Jensen! What was that? Hey, I'm hype. <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. Uh, switching gears just really briefly, yes. uh, because there's been a lot of new talent in the LCS this year, is a Rookie of the Year check-in. So this is not something that's going to be handed out this split, but we have had some really high-performing rookies. Yes. First up, we're going to be talking about Sniper, who, aside from, like, one really strange Thursday, yeah. I feel like has had a great I agree. year I agree. I agree. <laughs> so far in 2024. Emily? Uh, well, I think one thing that Fudge uh, pointed out just when we were chatting in the green room that I also really appreciate about Sniper is he is willing to take a lot of risky trades mm -hmm. in lane. And I love seeing that from a rookie. Like, if you are going to kind of punt your wave sometimes to play like Bin, I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. I, I like that. I like the limit testing. I think that's why he's still this massive solo kill leader that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously there are specific things he can prove on in in lane specifically, but I just love his attitude. It's really refreshing. And when a rookie comes in, that's exactly how I, I want to see them play like Sniper has been playing this split. 
I think Sniper honestly was the biggest surprise of the split for me. Yeah. I, I really didn't expect him to come out so strong. And I think he has a very clear strength as a player, which is when he's in the aggressive matchups, he definitely pushes it. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like like yesterday, at least when he's in the losing matchups, he doesn't know how to lose gracefully. Mm -hmm. it, it feels like he's not very good at understanding when he should recall, when he needs to take CS and when he needs to give CS. And, and it feels like he, he doesn't really play the losing side very well, but when he's on the aggressive side, like the Rumble side versus Renekton, right, he also doesn't uh, see the whole game and really understand what the jungler is, it feels like. Like, he, he sees the 1v1 and he understands his 1v1 limits, but he doesn't really think about my Zin Zhao's in the bush or my Ari's coming up top side from mid lane. That could also be a team issue, right? It could also be their jungler not telling him, their mid laner not telling him, but um, I think he definitely needs to work on that aspect, but overall 1v1 laning, I feel like he's improved so much throughout this split, nice. and it's really impressive. Yeah, and another aspect of it too is his team fighting. Yeah. Because Hunter Thieves team fight a lot, like that's just, they're a really bloody team, and I think <laughs> he recognizes how to play team fights, at least from his, like for instance, specifically on Aatrox. I think his Aatrox team fighting is really good. Mm -hmm. um, same with uh, Cassante in general, so like, it, that's been, I agree, like a really surprising fact about him. And I think it's just been, the team has been talking about how like comfortable they make each other feel. At least like River will play towards him well and it feels really good to have a great jungle right next to you. Um, and so it seems like they've really pushed his strengths mm -hmm. and at times covered the weaknesses. And that's just a uh, mark, a great mark for coaching stuff. Yeah, two more rookies as well. Another 100 Thieves rookie. Hit me with another one. Uh, is Meech. True. He has some pretty incredible stats for the split. Part of it is because the team fought so much. Uh, I think he also may have led all players in kills in the LCS as well, but that's mm. also because Hunter Thieves are leading in kills. And then another player I'd say would be Masu. So we can kind of talk about both young AD carries in general, which I feel like is tricky this particular split because we're all somewhat aligned that AD carry has been a bit of a weak role in spring, but with the year to come, these guys have performed at par or better than many of the other AD carries in the league, so I think they'd still be in the running for Rookie of the Year. I just have one thing to say that. To clarify, bot lane is not a weak role. The ADC players are weak. <laughs> <laughs> bot lane is not weak. The ADC <laughs> players. What, play. what does Berserker yeah, this, think of this take? Yeah, I was going to say, this feels like a preface for, like, don't buff ADC, <laughs> yeah. please. Yeah, do not listen to this propaganda. That's what I have to say. Uh, I, so I do want to ask you a question, though, Fudge, about your rookie split and almost how you feel it compares to the rookie splits we've seen from from these players. You did win in your first split, but we talked earlier in the show about how it started in a pretty rough spot. I don't know, I feel like the rookies this split have just been incredible. Like, I, I don't know how they can <laughs> play so well against all, all the players. I, I, I felt like in my first split, I didn't understand like half of the concepts that in the mid game mm. and late game. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's because they have like really good teammates that are able to help them. Yeah. Um, or maybe they just got really good coaching before they became an LCS player that I didn't maybe didn't have. Um, but it felt like they didn't really like lack ideas about the game. They don't, we weren't really like steps ahead of them in terms sure. of concept ideas. And, and then they obviously have the mechanics. I, I never felt like mechanics were a big problem when it comes to like rookies. It's more so just understanding of the game and they, they actually understand the game quite well, I feel. Yeah, pretty wild because you also went to Worlds before you were an LCS rookie. Sure. <laughs> but that's a whole different story for a different I was, day. I was OC, OC, OC yeah. knowledge. OCE 2-2 in playing group stage. Anyway, Raz, you caught up with both the coaches before today's series. Let's take a watch. What's up, everyone? I got head coach Spawn and Nuke Duck for this interview. Uh, for Spawn, question for you. Uh, actually, on the lounge just yesterday, Vulcan leaned on you guys for this matchup. I was wondering, what has the community not seen, but you've seen that's been special about the boys in practice? Well, obviously scrims, because in <laughs> scrims, we play a lot better than what we have on stage. I think that we're actually one of the more aggressive teams in scrims. So we're hoping that now in a best of five series where you know the individual games don't matter as much as the overall result, that's what we're able to bring today. Makes sense to me and for you. You guys have been consistent, first place of course, but consistent since the start of the split till now. What have kept you guys consistent up until this point that you hope to see today? <clears throat> um, I, I don't think we've been that consistent. I think we played like kind of bad last week. Uh, we kind of didn't like, you know, we already knew we were going to be in playoffs. So I just hope that the players uh, can switch it a bit more on and take it a bit more serious. Yeah, now that the game matters. Sounds good. Any uh, any final message you have for Coach Spawn and the boys? Uh, just uh, good luck, yeah. Same with you. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Uh, we really respect FlyQuest. They've been one of the teams we've scrimmed against a lot, so we're looking forward to the series. Sounds good. Thank you. And back to you guys. 
Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> good luck to everybody. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, we, we, we have you, though, Fudge, for the top lane matchup. Whippo and Impact, two of the best performing top laners so far in the spring split. What do you see? I mean, I think Impact has actually been more valuable to his team this split. I mean, mm. I feel like Impact okay. has been really surprising. As a top lane, it feels really hard sometimes when your team's not so good to, to really make an impact, funnily I enough. And, and uh, <laughs> I think Impact has been playing really, really well. But I think Whippo, like you could argue, is probably a little bit better in terms of his champion pool. Mm. I think he understands a lot of different matchups that no one else really understands. For example, when Udia first came out, he was like the best Udia for right. sure, I understood all the matchups. I think Impact's actually playing Udia really well now, um, but Bupo, you never really know what he's gonna pull out, especially when it comes to playoffs. It's kind of scary to play against a player like Bupo just because you feel like he's gonna play some random stuff that you're not gonna be prepared for. Like, you're in draft to meet, whoa, what is this? <laughs> he's uh, he's dead team. lifting he's been his team. Lifting. Yeah, he's, this was someone in a meeting said it's like he's been deadlifting his teammates to victory, and so we just made the picture. It's true, to yeah. be honest. Um, but yeah, Bupo is kind of scary because you're in draft meeting against Bupo and you're like, what the hell is he gonna play? on R5 here, like, uh, we do not know, just yep. hope he doesn't play something that we're not expecting. And he probably will, so. Have you seen some demons in his solo queue account just in general? I actually didn't check his solo queue account recently, but yeah. I'm sure there's gonna be some some demons in there, <laughs> that's for sure. I've heard, actually, in some of Whippo's draft meetings, it's it's also not super complicated to be on Whippo's side because you're just like, well, of course. we're gonna go to R5 yeah. and then we're just gonna yeah. figure it out. Yeah, we're gonna and figure that's out what some, he does some every random time. pick that's really good here, you know? Uh, yeah, on the other side, we have Core JJ as well, roaming a little bit more. Yeah, and, and this was a funny one to me because it reminded me uh, the game that they had specifically against Energy, and I know we we're talking about top lane in general and how the picks have been um, bot side have been kind of like you don't are you're not looking for dives, you're not needed to be there for the AD carry. Core JJ was the OG roaming support, so just picture yourself fudge top lane, and this stuff happens to you. The wave is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is funny because when Alfari was on TL with Core JJ, um, you actually saw it Sven talking about it in the podcast, so he was on with all the players. Yeah. Uh, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like, he, he was building a wave towards me, and I was thinking Cole JJ is top lane, and I was building a wave towards him, and I was thinking Cole JJ was top lane. It, was like, I, it felt like we were always on the reactive side, always, because like Cole JJ was just everywhere. Like in our heads, he's like Picasso. Like that's what we used to call him. We used to call him Picasso. <laughs> so, like, Picasso and the he, he's literally Picasso of support, and he's everywhere. So just be careful. And I think Cole JJ is very that's good amazing. at very good at playing that way. So. That's one of the things you gotta, he might bring back Picasso, Picasso Code Jay. Might be a Picasso series. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Let's check out the predictions for today. FlyQuest, definitely the favorites. I know my prediction is boring. I wanna see everybody else's. Sadly, I think we're all in the Also on that. boring. Wow, you guys okay. are boring. Spiciest. <laughs> are you got three too? I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be honest, I, I feel like it might be 3 1 as well, but <laughs> I want it to be 3 2, so I'm manifesting it right now. Okay, okay. Um, and I think I think it will be a close series. I mean, I think that if FlyQuest lose the first game, I wouldn't be surprised if Inspired just mental booms, because um, he's known for that. So I look forward to seeing if Inspired mental booms. But if they don't lose the first game and they win the first game, I see them winning the series. Emily? Yeah, I mean, I think TL are a really frustrating team for me to watch because sometimes <laughs> they do put together like a really legitimately good macro win. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, can you do this next game? And the answer is no, they don't do that next <laughs> game. Um, so it is like, I know they have it in him, in them to take games off of FlyQuest. It's just FlyQuest have been way more consistent. And I think in terms of how they want to play, FlyQuest really know how they want to play. And the last time they went up against FlyQuest Team Liquid, that is like, that was the Aurelian Soul Smolder game. They <laughs> oh, played God. to scale, they, they bullied won. side lane, they won that game. So anything really is possible. So it could go 3-2 and T TL could uh, take it. I want to change my prediction right now. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm changing it to 3-2 TL because uh, <laughs> C9 just completely played opposite of how they were playing in regular season. I think it's going to be the same thing for TL. And in scrims, TL is better than FlyQuest. That's all I have to say. Boom. So TL, Whoa. TL's winning. I'm going to say TL's winning 3-1 actually. 3 -1. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> If we if we don't cut you off soon, it's going to be a 3-0. So we're going to the stage right now before you change your prediction once again. <laughs>
Arriving at the studio, we have FlyQuest. They're coming in hot off of a first place finish, and they've got their sights set on their first LCS title. On the other side, it's a Team Liquid Honda squad hungry to dispel the doubts surrounding them and challenge the top dogs. The LCS playoffs continues. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid Honda starts right now. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Riot Games Arena live in sunny Los Angeles. I'm Rafa, and I'm joined on the caster desk by Zale and Kobe. And this series, gentlemen, I know that FlyQuest are favored, but based on the last match that they had in week six, this series could go the distance. Also, I would say uh, we had Vulcan on the lounge yesterday. He said that TL's bottom lane is the best bottom lane in the league. He thought TL was going to win. And I also asked Doko last night on his stream who he thought was going to win. He also said TL. So... There are a lot of people also still rooting for TL, uh, and a lot of players actually have confidence in them because of the scrims. Exactly, that's what I was gonna say. So many of the pros do have faith in this team because TL, even when they're not performing in the LCS stage, they are performing in scrims. This is one of the strongest scrim teams in the league. We have to see, can they get it all together though? Have that success here on stage against FlyQuest. And we heard it from Fudge. He thinks that first important game is going to mean so much for the confidence of these players, for the mental state of these players. And we might be having double marksman bot lane here for FlyQuest to kick things off. Busio, definitely one of our biggest Ash enjoyers for the mm -hmm. Ash support. He loves playing pushing lanes, loves playing those aggressive matchups. And Kalista Ash is the peak. This is going to be really interesting because we already see the enemy bot lane as well. It is Varus, uh, you know, plus the Nautilus here. I wonder if it is going to be double Doran's Blade start for the Ash Kalista. Try to really emphasize as much early game power as possible. As long as you don't allow yourself to get hooked by Core JJ, as long as you're safe around, you know, MT not being there, you're going to be able to dominate the 2v2. We see a lot of double Halo Blades and things like this. Double Doran's Blade starts and really emphasizing that early aggression. Yep. We're T1 now, baby. Carrier, get to work. Uh, they also have the Talia, which was a really important pick. Uh, everyone with APA, you know, cycling through his champions is always thinks, oh, is it the Ziggs, the Aurelian Soul, or is it the Talia? Jensen picks up Talia first for having the roaming towards bottom side, but APA slams back down the Ari, which has been a good answer. All right, well, Ari going to be coming through. We'll have to see how he's going to be able to perform on it. You know, has been a really popular pick around the world these days. Malignant Slitchbane seems to be the build. It's so much upfront damage, so much guaranteed damage. It does not rely on hitting the charms, on being able to hunter zero people. And, and both of these mid laners rely on junglers with some sort of CC, some, some sort of uh, stun or something. So I think both right now are looking at banning out enemy junglers. Yep. Ari, if you have somebody with, a, with setup, boom, that's instant as well. Um, Talia does super, super well, obviously, so you can get your seismic shoves. Obviously, Vi and uh, Volibear have both already been banned, which are two of the best pairings, but uh, TL also taking out the Poppy as far as that, like, uh, disengage, trying to avoid the uh, knockdowns there for Nautilus and Ari. Also works really well uh, with the work ground there uh, from Talia with the E, because you can actually tackle them through it and yep. force the stun. Force the stun out of there. I think the big thing that Team Liquid are looking at when they're banning junglers is tank junglers in specific, because so far, FlyQuest, they have engage power, but they don't have a front line set up for this massive backline quite yet. All right, whittling down here. Poppy will be followed up with Udir. Udir, definitely something that Team Liquid have relied on more, I feel like, than any yeah. of the other teams, uh, specifically for Impact. You heard the Lounge talking a little bit about Impact and his influence on this Team Liquid squad. A lot of it was his five games of Udir that he has played so far in spring. It just allowed him to do so much more for the team, invading yeah. enemy jungle, uh, going for ganks on mid lane, getting so much extra vision for the team as well. But since they ban it out, and then FlyQuest is then forced to ban out the Rumble, um, the, the other like really oppressive top laner there, it, it looks is. like it is going to be, I would say for sure, still save red side pick here for impact. Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense, but I wouldn't have been surprised, you know, had they just left the Udyr up and tried to take it on, on four, or even forced FlyQuest to bin it out. And obviously they didn't want to grab it, so they're going to be forced to ban it, because Bufo does play it as well, even though not as much as Impact. Uh, Zin does make a lot of sense here, and they need some more physical damage. 
and it is going to be fifth pick counter pick here for impact but historically let's be honest he's not the player that really makes the most from that he doesn't usually go with the super spicy picks he's usually more on the predictable side but he can execute well uh, we did see a really good Jax game that i think unfortunately for him resulted in a loss uh, but was still one where he was playing very very well and it's going to be the renekton Oh, Plus the Sedgwani, Sedgwani. really strong combo on that top side. I mean, the whole map here for FlyQuest is strong. This mm -hmm. is really, really strong early game. Aggressive lanes here for FlyQuest. Let's see what uh, Impact has in store. You mentioned the Jax already. I mean, they, they actually haven't locked the Sejuani. I assume it's going to go there, though. Yeah. It's such a good pairing. Uh, and it puts so much pressure on whatever top lane pick you are going to have for Impact. So they're kind of trying to force him into something that is more defensive. Uh, because there's not a lot of things that can out-duel Renekton Sejuani, even yeah. if you have a Xin Zhao as your jungle. I mean, I think you can go Jax and kind of play it as a skill matchup, you know, be able to actually try to avoid those stuns. Aatrox would make some sense here as well, uh, but not exactly the most inspiring is that fifth pick counter pick. Yeah, definitely not early game. Aatrox is like, all right, <laughs> I am not messing around yeah. with uh, Renekton Sejuani early. Maybe after we get some levels here, they can, they can turn something around. But this is such a cool look, I think, for FlyQuest yep. to be the ones on stage here that want to take priority and want to make a lot of these early moves especially having the confidence to first pick Kalista and go with Kalista Ashlane for their young players their rookie Masu who has done so well with this team um, and ha really has been a rising star Absolutely. And on the other side for TL, most of their success has come from late game scaling comps, from playing around 5v5. I think this comp can 5v5 well, but it's not, you know, by any means a full hard scaling composition. You know, I do think it's much more mid gamey with, with the Zin, with the Ari. They want to be able to brawl. They want to be able to do that. So we'll see if they can be proactive in the early game, if they can really keep up with what FlyQuest is trying to do here. Because I think FlyQuest got some really strong lanes. They have a lot of avenues to attack. They have a lot of ways to engage. They have a lot of CC. And they've yeah. got themselves a really strong draft. I mean, the thing that I like the most about the engage is that it's non-committal engage. You fish for a Glacial Prison, you get a flash, all right. You don't have to force everything else. You throw out an arrow from Busio as well. You can get summer spells or you can lay up for those guaranteed picks on the side of FlyQuest. Whereas Team Liquid, for them, the engage power really comes through the bottom side of the map. Nautilus and Varus, they have to be synced to find that one target to pick off in these fights. I'm I'm a little worried for Umpty here. I was I was pretty surprised he went with the Zin Zhao picks. Pretty hard to play Zin Zhao into a Talia. Um, and the other Freljord champions with Sejuani and Ash here too. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Emily was talking about as well how, how many risks he likes to take, how aggressive Umpty likes to look. If you're on a Zin Zhao and you, and you get punished early, then it can snowball against you pretty hard. But they're all going bottom side here for TL. Yeah, and they have a ward, so they'll spot FlyQuest move up. I think both teams just five stacking, you know, hoping that the other team is going to invade into them. I don't think we're going to end up getting any action here. But Impact, 600th career game in the LCS. Third player to accomplish that. Pretty incredible career Hell he yeah. has had here. Won a world championship before even coming over. But has had such an amazing career. Definitely the most successful, most tenured top laner we have in this league's history. It is worth mentioning, you know, I touched on the double Dorans. I was expecting it from the uh, Ash Kalista. Corja J actually went Doran's ring to start here to try to match some of that power, but Busio did not elect to start with the D-Blade. So he started starting with that support item. Uh, so he is going to be a little bit weaker as a result. And they're actually playing Cleanse Heal down on that bot lane instead of what is the more oh. traditional. Oh. Dredge line lands right on Tomas, who forced to cleanse, needs to use the flash as well. So much damage in the early game. And this is this is the whole plan for TL. Since their bottom lane is the kill bottom lane, they've got the CC, they have the Nautilus. They get an early huge advantage here. Double summoner spells. And Xin Zhao is starting on top side, of course. So he's going to path down towards this lane. You have to think Umpty is going to make an early move towards this bottom lane. I also really want to know what's going to happen mid lane now. Because APA started uh, Charm and Flash Charmed there to be able to actually commit to that play. So he gave up a lot of his own power in this lane to be able to help down towards bot side. We'll see if this is going to make any sort of an impact from Jensen. If he can use this for any sort of an early move with Inspire to try to take advantage of that, uh, that could be huge because definitely Masu and Busio on the back foot from the word go. Oh man, so we're going to have uh, Summoner's Spell disadvantage on bottom side for them, but massively pushing solo lanes here for FlyQuest. And, and both junglers are headed down to the bottom side. Hawkshot always super nice uh, there. Busio landing it. 
But both junglers are going to be heading down here, so should be able to match for the for the Sejuani. Inspired's been very good uh, about covering the necessary. Never mind, hook lands. Ignite onto Busio. Does not pop the flash, but that's a lot of damage after that engage from Core JJ. But I assume they're just going to back off here. They should just reset. They know that Zin's clearing down. They know that they're low. They timed this out really, really well. You know, once they got the hawk shot, they got that information. They have been stacking the wave. This was really well handled after a super tough level one. Core is going to try to stop the base, though. And he is going to unfortunately spot Masu. Masu needed to recall in a bit of a better spot. Maybe he's trying to bait him into Inspired at this point. We don't have vision on this edge one but I feel like maybe he's around. Uh, yeah, I feel like that would also be a really dangerous bait because he doesn't know where what, Zin is. What is he doing? He needs his base by the tower. Yeah, he's going to get his recall interrupted. He's desynced now with Busio and he's sub 50% HP. I mean, yeah. he, he literally just wasted 20 seconds. Like, because he, he started, he could have just recalled literally where Busio did by the tower and then Core can't stop you. But twice he started up the recall uh, over by that tri brush, you know, maybe betting on the fact that Core wouldn't walk over there thinking Sejuani could be there, but uh, not really a, a high risk, high reward type play. So, Inspired trying to play off his pushing mid lane here. Of course, we did also get a shot there of Whippo, who was proxy farming between the two towers on top side since they got that hawk shot confirmation of where Umpty was. But Masu couldn't base. He might just die because of those failed recalls. Inspired needs to cover this dive here. Umpty is here first, but Inspired is right behind him in fog. Umpty is going to get face checked here by Inspired. Should be fine. Early game damage from Sejuani is just a little bit with the permafrost as Umti dashes right back in. Yeah, all you ever want there is a little health trade. Uh, try and use your aftershock and get an upfront yeah. trade since your bottom lane can't join. Masu's in no position to get out of the tower, so gets a little bump there, makes them stay honest. They're, they're not going to get any extra pressure. And in the end, Kalista here, Masu, has... Uh, cleaned up the CS, so hasn't been bad for him yet. Even though it started out playing both summoner spells, uh, you know, getting recall interrupted there, just sticking around for the wave and, Whippo, and getting the CS. Maybe solo kill on the top side of the map, but Impact still has flash available. Whippo doesn't have level six, but he's pushed up a massive way into the top side. He's waiting for his CDs. He has five seconds on his stun. Umti is coming as fast as he can. Level five now reached by Impact. Gets a little bit of extra healing from that base level up. So he should be fine now. That was actually critical, though. If Umti got there a couple seconds later, Impact is for sure dead under his tower. And Boob was actually crushing in the 1v1. He didn't have to TP. Impact had already used his TP and had no gold when he TP'd back. He just bought the refillable to that double longsword from Whippo, who didn't even have to use his TP. Now he's going to come back with another longsword as Inspired is working on these grubs. So a great start from Whippo in the solo lane. Mid lane, the charm start hasn't really amounted to much, and the flash is almost back here for APA, so you can definitely kind of call worth on that. Uh, but likewise, down in bot lane, Masu is about to have his flash back, and they have weathered the storm. Yeah. Having, having the push was super nice, at least, though. You know, mm -hmm. having both solo lanes push, at uh, guarantee grubs here for, for FlyQuest, for Inspired. But Team Liquid, now they've got another roam timer. Core JJ goes mid first, pushes it out for APA. But... Doesn't look like it's going to be any extra action down there. And Umpty visits topside as Impact is almost dead. Impact pops the world ender. Whippo has his Dominus, but Inspired is here for the counter. And Umpty has to leave his top laner to die. First blood for Inspired. Nicely done. FlyQuest crushing on the top side. That is all Whippo. Yeah, it's Inspired getting the kill, but Whippo dominates the 1v1, forces out the early TP with no buy, then TPs back and crushes him. Dredge line onto Masu, the Ignite already cleansed, but a flash from Yon can secure the kill. He doesn't even need to. Gets the 1v4 as Busio now on the back end. A 2v2 by Yon and Core JJ. He just barely didn't have his flash. There were seconds left on the flash there for Masu, and they capitalized off that earlier level one play. Good timing. Just at the very end, they make it pay off, and it pays off huge. It's a double kill. Both kills into Yon's pockets here. Vulcan did say this was what he thought was the best bottom lane in the LCS. Core yes. JJ's Nautilus, him on engage champions, always to be feared. And they do end up finally capitalizing on it, even though there had been a CS lead there for the FlyQuest duo, chasing them both down. Yep, and that's, that's kind of the nice edge that you walk with these double marksman lanes. You can really punish and you can create big advantages, but you make that one misstep and you can get crushed. This impact may be in trouble. Yeah, he still has flash, but Whippo is just completely manhandling this top lane. But I just have to say, the timing on the hook was so nice from Core. Yon and the tower, I believe, both hit that minion, the range minion, at the same time. So it died right as the hook was coming out in the air. They thought they were safe behind that minion. Perfect timing, perfect placement there from TL. 
to capitalize and maybe FlyQuest is getting a hair overconfident as they were seconds away from that flash being back on Masu. Yeah. Core has always been so good at using the hook champions through those dying minions. Top side though, Inspired. Impact still doesn't have World Ender quite yet. It looks like it's just coming off cooldown, but they get the CC stun, and it's just too easy for the FlyQuest jungle top duo. Yeah, that is perfectly done there. Inspired pulls aggro with the passive from the armor. Bupo flashes in with the empowered stun, guaranteeing the Glacial Prison to come through there from Inspired right after. Nice and easy. They make it look flawless, and Impact is out of this game. Well, what do Team Liquid do now, folks? I mean, if you're top side, who has been the most of yeah. <laughs> pray, pray that Yon is going to be able to carry you through the mid game. Big thing to note, though, APA is not that far down in CS. He's been keeping up with Jensen in the mid lane so far. We haven't seen any plays made from him yet, but he is past that level six point. Spirit Rush is available. I want to see if he can link up with the bottom side to really snowball that further. I think mean, it just gets so much more painful for top side when you're playing. Uh, against champions that rush Eclipse as well. Not yeah. only is it a lead for Whippo, but because Eclipse is so cheap, you get this early lead and you absolutely smash the hell out of this lane. Now he's got fully completed Eclipse and you're looking at steel caps on the side of Impact. So bottom side is gonna be the only hope for Team Liquid. Maybe APA can, can get involved there. Um, you know, Ari roaming down towards bottom side to try and uh, help out as well. But Jensen has done quite well on this Talia, keeping control of the wave and, and clearing that out. And of course, he does have ulti to answer as well. Another powerful early completion is the Knight's Vow. Inspired has been going more heavily towards this. You know, a lot of people obviously were building this in the past, but it was more like a second item thing. The new era is just kind of just rushing these support items straight up first item as fast as you can get them. And we saw him earlier, you know, in, in the season going for this. And he was actually linking with Blippo and just playing heavy 2v2 on top side because they already have that lead. They have this pr powerful jungle top duo. That's going to make it even harder to deal with this Renekton. Yeah, everybody's been doing it, especially since the Frozen oh. Heart nerf. Masu's in trouble, has flash and cleanse available, but he knows oh. that he's a goner either way. Yawn picks up another kill. Okay, so that only hope is looking like a pretty good hope, though. The prayers are being answered. <laughs> so far <laughs> that that team liquid hope on the bottom lane is holding strong but yeah the the frozen heart nerf everyone just finally realized how efficient knight's vow is and there was a little change uh that they did to knight's vow this season it has actually been this way for the whole season um where it is not free mitigation damage anymore yeah, uh, so you actually do get mitigated and so you take less damage um and feels really really nice mm -hmm. uh allowing for your AD carry, or in some cases, your top laner to, to give you that extra healing as well. It just makes those uh, those duels for Renekton and Sejuani even more unbeatable. Yeah, it's definitely tough. How, how are you feeling about the fact that you're no longer a jungler, you're just a forest support? Yeah, I talked about this with Flowers. <laughs> Not great. It, it's, Not great. it's never great when, when we turn into, you know, having to Flowers rush, is like, uninstalling uh, the game if it's, if it's a Knight's Vow rush angle. It's Knight's nice Vow or like Locket of the Iron Solari was yeah, another yeah. one of these where it's just so efficient and you need it for your team. Yeah, but. I mean, this is just flashbacks <laughs> of the Redemption rush era too. <laughs> That was awful. Heart of gold and all the super old stuff. Honestly, though, uh, let's see what Team Liquid can continue to do on the bottom side, because obviously FlyQuest, massive, massive uh, power difference on the top side, and, and Blippo's almost going to be able to finish off this tower. Honestly, when Inspired does get here, they'll probably finish it off and uh, maybe look for something else. Looks like he's recalling, but... Yawn here does have his ghost blade, so mm, very, very painful poke. Yeah, I mean the, the bot lane is is pretty useless, honestly, for FlyQuest as well. So you know, while they're not as as out of it as uh, Impact, I think, is on the top side, the bot lane is put, put very far behind. And this is to the point where anytime Umpty comes down, if Core can just hit an ult on one of these guys, they are pretty much guaranteed dead. So TL definitely have a way to win this game. They have a really strong lane to play through, and um, we'll have to see if they can actually make it work for them. Also worth noting that it's six grubs that have been grabbed yeah. up there for FlyQuest. So pretty easy for Whippo, who has this pushing matchup, just slowly chip away at that. And the problem is, like, the, the poke against uh, Fed Sejuani and Fed Renekton isn't really going to be able to win you the game. So yeah. uh, they're going to have to do some work uh, as far as objectives as well, try and get the rest of the team back into this. Whippo and Inspired will lead the charge. Yeah. Dragon Timer coming up pretty soon as well. Hopefully they can get a uh, top side objective taken care of. I mean, Umti is forced to shadow impact here because Whippo can just threaten to take the turret. The minions might just take it by themselves. 
as he barely oh man impact was not able to take out the last minion before the auto attack comes through whippo is gonna land fly quest first brick of the game i mean six void mites yeah that, that thing is for sure going down at mm. some point so uh no extra risk there trying to defend or anything and sticking around and that's just gonna be the outer tower taken down before the dragon spawn is kind of the break point I was looking at. Hopefully they could finish up that top objective before the, the dragon does come. And now they have. Plus with unleashed teleports ready, I feel like FlyQuest uh, are definitely going to have a big advantage. Uh-oh. Over 2,000 gold lead. <laughs> I mean, Impact has the ultimate and he has Flash, but Whippo might just corral him in a corner and he's got Jensen as backup as well. The Weaver's Wall is gonna Bye. cut off the escape route. Impact might try to Flash, but it might just be a little too late here. Impact, just one more movement to go, but Jensen just throws rock after rock after rock and takes out Impact. Yeah, you never need to throw your seismic shove, just run him down with the rocks. Uh, and so they go for the kill on top side instead of Dragon, and Umpty's gonna try and rush Dragon. There's the TP from Whippo though, and Whippo is gonna be really strong as he comes down. Arrow lands right onto core JJ. Yawn has to back up to safety, but Umpty still has the Dragon being whittled down. And this should be the second Dragon of the game going over to Team Liquid. So they've got the Dragon stacking on their side a little slow to start, but that is another condition for them to play to. Definitely a mistake though from Whippo. You know, he, he, he bases, he TPs down like he wants to fight. He hadn't actually spent his gold. He forgot to buy. So he didn't actually buy anything with his gold in pocket there. Maybe that's why they called it off. Maybe they just thought it was going to be too risky in general. But uh, a wasted TP is he TPs down to bot and then immediately has to base. A little bit of egg on his face, spends his gold. Now he's going to hoof it back down to bot lane again. I mean, you can tell that FlyQuest are really trying to snowball Whipless lead to the other side of the map. Unfortunately for them, they miss up the play and don't really get anything off the back end. Whippo now is level 11. He's going to be super strong in the side lane. I I'm just curious if, like, do FlyQuest really want to force these fights, or do you just let Whippo take up the 1v2 in these solo lanes and force that as pressure? I mean, I think, to, to me, it's you keep Whippo in the side lane as long as he can continue chipping away at these towers, yeah. right? If he's actually being into a position where he can take objectives, where he's extending the lead, that's where it's good. If it ever stalls out, then you need to have him grouping with the team and forcing objectives elsewhere, because you need to utilize the Renekton's power to the utmost. He is at such an incredibly strong point right now, so if he can't pressure an Ari under the tower, he needs to group up his team, force around objectives. And TL, they just need to group and look for their pick when FlyQuest are trying to play all three lanes uh, and get the extra objectives. Try and use your Nautilus plus Varus plus Ari combination uh, to pick one of these people off. You know, when FlyQuest spread themselves a little bit too thin, that's your time to try and punish there. Inspired has just been 100% on all of the top side oh, objectives this up. game. Six Void Grubs, a Rift Herald. Their turret pushing power this game is just massive. This is pretty nicely handled though. Obviously, TL couldn't actually challenge because Renekton was moving up. So what they do is they back off, but they know Renekton moved up to mid. So Core and Yawn walk into the bot side jungle, ward that up, and actually guard that jungle. So Bwibble couldn't walk back down and stop APA from taking the tier one. So that's really nice movement around the map. Yes, there is the other punch on the other side here, as it's gonna be the getaway car uh, for Jensen. So they grab something else on the top side, but I do think that's still really smart play from TL and deserves to be highlighted. And he doesn't get it to, to go down a different lane or anything, just uses it uh, to get back out to safety. Uh, there's some fun shenanigans uh, mm -hmm. people have done in side lanes, pushing with these things and then trying to use the CC Drift immunity the <laughs> to go for it. But uh, these wards that they left on that invade and, and controlling the, the split push on bottom side are now being cleared out. Nice little chunk there though, at least onto the support ash. APA gets cut off by Whippo, forced to use the Spirit Rush. And that ultimate's gonna be gone for the next minute. I will say that was very respectful from APA. I guess he thought there was gonna be other people from behind Busio, but that was a free kill, right? If he actually wanted to pop his ult, that's a guaranteed kill there onto Busio. Um, but if someone's behind Busio, maybe it goes bad, so that's what he's worried about. And the pain train does not stop for impact as he is cut off by Jensen once again. Another death brutal. in the top laner of Team Liquid. This is, I mean, you said it, Azale, it's brutal. Do you miss me, Impact? <laughs> Jensen and Impact, obviously, <laughs> old friends, old teammates from Jensen's time on Team Liquid as well. And he's just going to say hi to his old buddy, you know? That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, I feel like you, you always want to beat up your old teammates. You want to be like, ah, yeah, you know I was better. It's very funny because uh, they asked Jensen about, you know, beating up his old team too on the, mm -hmm. the interview afterwards where he was talking about Dignitas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, honestly, in this game, it feels like he has more of a focus on beating up Impact than he did on the entire Dignitas team. <laughs> 
Here's a question for you two. Well, I know that Impact is not having the greatest game in this opener of the series, but would you rather have Impact getting all these deaths, or is there anyone else on the team that would be taking these deaths? Because Impact... I'd rather Core JJ has all those deaths. Well, okay, okay, <laughs> and my okay, top leader on, is bro. useful. What, what, what I'm trying to get at is kind of like the mental endurance, because Impact has been a long tenured career player in the LCS. Yeah. Whereas if Yawn or AP, he's are not going to tell. Yeah. He's not going to tell. I think that's what you're trying to get at, yep. right? Yep. Uh, you know, he is a really good weak side player. He knows how to mitigate loss. Uh, that's one of the skills that, you know, Fudge was talking about. He was saying, you know, Sniper is, oh, uh, not going to go for it. Does force out the heal, wow. though. Zion used it for the move speed to try the to juke out a potential I, ult. I actually love those moves. It's, you know, trying to make people flinch. Yeah. Uh, it's this, the schoolyard tactics going at them <laughs> and seeing seeing if they throw any summoner spells or uh, or anything useful We're there. the schoolyard bully, Kobe. You're trying to make people... <laughs> I'm just saying I've seen it in Okay, action, you've seen it. You know? And you stopped it. I've, I've Being the good Samaritan it. that you are. Exactly. Okay, I, I like it. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think, you know, it's one of the things that was really interesting about Fudge talking about Sniper was how good he is in lane, but he was saying he's not as good at losing gracefully, which is a really important skill in top lane. Because when it goes bad in top lane, it can go real bad. And Impact has a lot of experience, you know, playing from all different scenarios, from ahead, from behind, from even, and he's incredible at it. All right, teleport coming in from Impact. 3v1, potential onto Whippo. Inspired is running as fast as possible. The Dominus is popped. Ash is gonna stop Impact and distraction. The global power from a fly quest. The Avengers are coming in, and this just might make Team Liquid really regret this decision. APA forced the Spirit Rush backwards, and now they're on the run. Whippo gets charmed up here, but the flash into the stun. Enough damage, Jensen follows three. The three-man knockup is not gonna matter, oh. as the seismic shove definitely matters. Triple kill for Jensen, looking for more. Masu picks up the last kill. Oh my goodness, it's brutal. Talia's so good coming in to defend when the enemies have invested so much chasing deep there onto Whippo. Fly quests are gonna run over the map now. After a play like that, it just blows the map wide open. They already had a giant gold lead, but now they stop the dragon stacking and they get uh, the bottom outer tower pushed in as well. Jensen's even taking away your Gromp. Like, nothing is yours anymore. Yeah, this is brutal. Not even 20 minutes in. 5.5k gold lead here for FlyQuest. Jensen massive in that one. Bwipo really getting the utmost out of his lead. He knows how to push an advantage. He knows how to play these fights outright. And, and look at the minimap. Everybody here with uh, their globals is coming down. Teleport was used from Jensen to get to the tower. And then he ults from tower over to join as the arrow from Busio also lands here uh, onto Team Luka. It didn't really matter that inspired Sejuani ult went in the middle. It's a slow field. It's fine. They had him invested already. And while Team Liquid do get their kill on the Whippo, that seismic shove was so wide. I mean, it, it, ah! it got all of them. Yeah. And we're back to live and we're back to watching another TL member die. And they are now sharking around the Baron here. They've got the Callista. They're going to start this up. We've seen Callista smites go wrong, but Umti has no flash. And it's going to be tough for him to make something happen here. Wait, there was a Blast Cone up there behind Baron, wasn't there? They, yeah. They're coming down to the front instead. 8,000 HP on the Baron. Umti does not have flash. So once he gets in, it's a one-way trip with the wind becomes lightning into the audacious charge. He sees it. He's able to keep the Baron in his range. Impact is flanking from the left side. Great charm. Lands on a Jensen. That's a big shutdown. Goes over to Yawn. But the Baron is secured by FlyQuest as Um T and Yawn try to deal with Whippo, who is trying to distract the back line. APA finds another one on the Busio in the back. Inspired is cut off, trying to corral around Whippo. This might have just gone wrong for FlyQuest. They need to keep their Baron buffs alive as Whippo now turns right back on the Um T. Oh. But Yawn pops him like a balloon. Inspired is now on the run. Court JJ is back from the grave, and he's got vengeance on his mind as Masu might just be the next one. Team Liquid have turned this game around. FlyQuest got the barrel, but Team Liquid got the ace. That is massive for them as they were so focused on actually finishing this Baron. You know, Bwipo is zoning in the jungler way, but he's dying as he's doing it. Ari is killing people on the other side as FlyQuest are so fully committed to this. Masu and Inspired never peel off the Baron. They want to play for the finish, but look at Busio already very low. The Chains of Corruption catches on to APA, or excuse me, as APA goes forward, it caught on to Jensen, is able to follow that up with the charm, gets a kill, then on the bottom side of the fight, Bwipo is also losing in a 1v2. Yeah, the key here here is that pick that you talked about, landing the Varus ultimate into the charm from APA and deleting Jensen. Jensen had five kills. He had the bounty on his head. He was the super fed Talia. And so while FlyQuest make the call uh, to try and delay and they just chase Umpty out, Whippo's job was just push out enemy jungler. We'll finish it. We got Ren. We got Smite. They do end up getting the Baron, but because Jensen got sniped there by Yawn, 
they actually end up losing over 3,000 uh -oh. gold. Whippo is here. Inspired is almost critically low, but he's going to be saved by his teammates for now. But now he's going to be pinned in by the Weaver's wall. He's got nowhere to go. His impact comes in and takes him out of the fight. But Yon falls to Whippo and Busio on the back end. Jensen is pumping out the damage with these rocks. AP tries to get in with the Spirit Rush, finds Masu in the back, but impact is now left alone. And this match is turning out to be a bloody one. Yeah, this is turning into an absolute bloodbath here. Both teams scrapping it out. But so much gold swung back the way of TL. They are back into this game. TL, 10,000 <laughs> LCS kills now. Pretty incredible stuff. Only behind C9, who is in first place. But that was, you know, 1K shutdown on Jensen. Five total kills. More bounties taken off. Another couple kills down on that bot side as they're looking for another pick here on Inspired, and they are able to get it. Yeah, I mean, so so this is a very different pick target, obviously. <laughs> this is a Sejuani, <laughs> and they're not picking Jensen. Just wait until Jensen arrives, because he's almost done with his death cap. The entire game right now for TL should be thinking about how do we kill Jensen first? They thought they had a kind of a free pick there, yeah. but every time they've made a pick on one of the frontliners of FlyQuest, guess what? Talia gets to wall in, and Jensen just gets to destroy you joining late while all of your focus has been on one of the frontliners for FlyQuest. It was Whipple originally in the side lane, this one in the jungle pick on to Inspired. That actually is to the benefit of FlyQuest, because then their carries just get to dump damage. Impact might be gone. Still has Flash, pops the world under, turns on to Jensen. Umzi is here for the counter, the there Flash you. over the wall, and Inspire can't do anything to save Jensen. Oh. Big shutdown to Umti. That is massive. Umti comes in right at the right time, and there's another fight mid. Teleport from Impact, tries to join the fight. Whipple already flashed in to try to guarantee the kill onto Yon. He finds it. Impact is there, finds revenge. Masu pinned against the wall. Inspire comes in, tries to save Masu. He's still alive. He's kiting this one out. Masu is still hitting, and no one is hitting it. Oh, that is League of Legends right there, baby. While they make a pick on the top side, Team Liquid still try and fight mid, but FlyQuest still reign supreme. Masu collects the Quadra. It's the rookie Masu going crazy on the Kalista in that mid lane fight. Even with <laughs> Jensen down, it just didn't matter. TL pile in, but they had spent so much on getting those other kills that when they arrive, they don't have the tools to actually deal with Masu here. It's them looking for the initial play on the FlyQuest side as they catch on to Yon, they decide to go for it. In goes Whippo, but great peel from both Core and APA as they look to turn around the fight. Yeah, I, I really like the arrow from Busio and, and the attempt here from FlyQuest. Um, I mean, uh, the attempt for the uh, the turnaround here. But yeah, it, it's going to be a massacre after they, after they get some space here. Masu, nice dodge there too. The last hop to the side of the wind becomes lightning. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Whippo popping off there, cheering on his teammate. Oh my, this is so fun. This is so fun. Now with six and a half thousand gold, uh, they should be able to pick up Dragon and push on bottom side too. Team Liquid, you gotta make the call. Give mm -hmm. that up. We've given up way too much gold in the last couple of fights, so just try and split push. <laughs> oh! Jensen throwing Wasn't his hat this into the ring with the trash talk. Oh my God, Jensen needling, uh, needling APA there. Is that a little incarnation bit. back? <laughs> I mean, the, the Jensen matchup versus APA is one of our featured matchups for this game. Jensen has so much experience. The the analyst was. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it get, continues. Oh, <laughs> I love the trash talk back and forth between some of these players, man. It's so fun. Uh, definitely spices up these matchups even more, but this is this has been a, a really exciting game. Jensen is monster fed though. Still, at the end of the day, he's like 2,000 gold ahead of the second richest person, pretty much, or at least 1,500 ahead. A ridiculously fast death cap, ridiculously fast fourth item coming in behind that. Uh, APA is going to be miles away from catching up to that point. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been such a massive split for Jensen, uh, for mm -hmm. FlyQuest in general, but him in particular, coming off of his. Uh, Dignitas uh, time, really, really big resurgence for Jensen. Everybody's been, uh, you know, even throwing his name around as far as all pro votes, as far as MVP votes even uh, a little bit. And of course, he is one of the most seasoned players in all of the LCS.
Well, that was something I got to talk to Nuke Duck before the season started about Jensen. He was saying, you know, he has such faith in Jensen's skill as an individual and that Jensen was really motivated, yeah. you know, on this FlyQuest team because he came in, he saw the level of his team, he saw the level of his teammates, and it really was motivating him to work hard, to be playing at his best because he knew he needed to be playing at his best to really live up to the expectations of this squad. And I think he's done incredible with that. Is Busio going to split the uprights? He'll go with the arrow, but that's okay. Non-committal engages, as we talked about at the top of the draft with FlyQuest. Glacial Prison does land, so you want to commit. Whippo is thinking about it on the right side of this flank, and they're just corralling Team Liquid back into their jungle. Yeah, it hits on Umpty, and he's got Merc Tread, so it wasn't going to last that long. They don't want to fully commit to it. Uh, he throws that out. If you get a juicy target, maybe you all pile in. At the end of the day, as you said, non-committal, not that big of a deal. But they are going to maintain that mid lane control. That'll allow them to move over, clear out some of the vision that we saw TL get in around this Baron. And they're going to always be threatening this now. You know they can kill this Baron very quickly. They also have a really good turn. So mm -hmm. Ash Arrow, very low cooldown. You just saw Busio throw one. Guess what? It's back up again already. Uh, Inspired still has a little while on the Sejuani ult, but they're making them check. Oh, core! great flash from the Seismic Shove. That's going to be a summoner spell down. Ash Arrow does connect on the Umti. Do they want to commit this time? But he did dash into the minion. The, the cooldown desync there is actually really big. Because if you Ash Arrow while you have a Seismic Shove ready, that person is dead. If that arrow lands on somebody and Seismic Shove is ready, but they use the Seismic Shove first on Core JJ, and then it wasn't ready when the Ash Arrow was up. Oh. He'll go from the prison, but Core JJ gets knocked up. AP on the side, threatening the flank. Impact on the right side of the flank. They've pinstered FlyQuest from both sides. The solo laner showing up huge from Team Liquid. They're going to find Inspired as well, and Blippo's cut off from the rest of the team. What an incredible fight from TL. They come in from both sides at once. Blippo had early popped the ulti previous to that, thinking he was going to be able to get a play. Renekton it had no ult. Impact comes from the top, and APA comes from the bottom, and they crush FlyQuest in that fight. And just like that, Teal are going to get the Baron. They're doing incredible to fight from behind. They were, I, they were just 6,000 gold up, and the trash <laughs> talk continues from APA. I mean, that's uh, that's my feeling. Is it, it was a really big choke because they just spaghettied all their big CCs. They, they used the seismic shove just open on the Nautilus, and then he flashes it. Then they use the arrow, and there's no follow-up with a seismic shove. Then they whiff the Sejuani ultimate, so all of the big threatening CCs have been used. So Core JJ says, yes, please, we'll take that engage. And then beautiful flank mm -hmm. from uh, Impact and APA here. Impact from the top side, APA from the bottom side and they just dissect this FlyQuest squad. Massacre, and they're gonna be able to get the Baron for the turnaround. Standing up. It's what serious. a punish. Yeah, you have to incredible. you have to jump on moments like that after you know, oh, they just used Ash Arrow, they just used Sejuani Ultimate, they missed these, they didn't have the follow-up. And man, oh, we'll see if this pick is gonna happen. Oh, there. that's a lot of damage. Jensen just pops for JJ. There you go, the guarantee. Sejuani ult, then it seismic shove, with it being ready, guaranteed kill. They got core JJ, now the pushback. I've gotta say though, man, if you lose this game as FlyQuest, that is crazy as far as how tilting that is gonna be, as Impact gonna have to pop the World Ender to run away, uh, because they were in so much control. And when you are really ahead in a game and you kind of bungle it a little bit and the other team capitalizes on it, you start sweating. You're going to get nervous. You're going to get stressed out. Arrow connects. Can Jensen get in a range for the seismic shove? Yes, he can. He pops the pressing guard. It's going to keep him safe for now. Yeah, I mean, especially with the with the trash talk. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the ones who started the trash talk. <laughs> and if, uh, if there's a clap back. Ah! Charm doesn't connect on the Whippo. Yon was in hot pursuit as well. Chain of Corruptions does land. And the damage should be enough. The Seraph's Gage is popped, tries to turn around, looks for the Empowered Healing, but it's not going to be enough. This does give FlyQuest the opportunity to take the third dragon. I mean, that is that is a, a good dragon here for FlyQuest. And we'll see if they can actually get towards Soul. That's their third straight dragon after TL were able to get the first couple. But TL is staying aggressive. They're staying active on the map. And this is what you have to love from a team when they're behind. You don't just roll over and die. You don't allow them to take control of the game. You try to dictate the pace. You try to make plays where you can. And FlyQuest is playing way too confident. They're playing way too cocky. They're pushing up in spots where they shouldn't be, and they're getting hit for it. Yeah, I, I think that they just need to refocus and coordinate a little bit. Yeah. Um, sometimes they, you get a little ahead of yourself when you're so far ahead, and you feel like you're so far ahead that you can just throw out some abilities. Arrow. It hits APA. He's already cast a Spirit Rush. Inspired, does he have Glacial Prison? He's just going to wait it out. It's an ulti for ulti trade. 
All right, push on top side definitely is going to get up to the tower then, though, since since everybody went mid after that arrow. And with the Baron buff, I think they just melt through this. Yeah, you honestly be careful, though. They know there could be a TP angle coming through. So it's going to have to watch out for it. You could see that TL were pinging assist pings and question mark pings behind them in the lane because they didn't know, is there a lane ward here? Are we going to die to a Bupo TP? Yeah. So they don't want Varus to be too far off. So they're playing with respect to that. We know in Spectator that there's not that ward, but they don't have that luxury. Yeah. Weaver's Wall is going to come through the mid lane. They're going to try to cut off impacts. He has flash available. What does Jensen do? Okay, he dashes over the wall. Not going to connect. Really it's just smart. another world ender pop. Really, really smart from Impact. Jensen hops off to the left. And Impact goes over to the wall so he can just jump over to the right. Really good avoidance there from the uh -oh. veteran, but... Okay, he dashes through, but he gets clipped by oh. the Unraveled Earth. And Impact will get shut down. Right, they're going to lose their inhibitor tower. Is this even worth it? They lost the tier two. They're going to lose their tier three. Now TL have to run because now you got to get out of there. Make sure you don't actually die on the exit. Teleport. Whippa wants to cut their escape route as fast as possible. Charm already lands on Nabucio. They kite him back. Inspired. Q flash. Lands the knockup onto Dion. Seismic shove connects. Yawn is gone. A majority of the damage from Team Liquid is already out of the fight. Core JJ is left behind and Numpty and APA run for the hills. And you can see the immediate pings there from FlyQuest towards mid lane. You know, they're looking to try to move there. Umti's trying to clear this wave out as much as he possibly can because he knows that's the wave that could be attacked. That's where they could try to get something more. If you just lose those couple kills, it's honestly not that bad because you've got multiple towers that are worth a lot of gold, but Umti's still got to huff it out of here. Yeah, they are in hot pursuit. Jensen, he's going to land a blind a shove. Doesn't quite connect it, but the slow is going to be enough. Permafrost stacking up. Inspire taking turret damage. They want to get this kill. Is it enough? The oh. seismic shove once again from Jensen connects. Okay, they chased out the straggler. They push up mid lane. This one is still action packed, but now it's flying at your door. Guess what? There's the arrow. Spirit rush dodge. Weaver of Wall from Jensen comes in. They're going to get this middle inhibitor for free. Do they want to push for the end? They've got six Void Grubs, remember. Eh. I mean, I'm, I'm still dead for 25 seconds or so. And look but at bot lane. Look at bot lane. They're losing their inhibitor tower, potentially. It died. It died with minions. Yeah, they've, they've given up too much gold already. Got to go for the reset here. Yeah, this is actually getting Ooh. really crazy. I mean, Dragon's up here in, in a minute 50, but there's now two open inhibitors here for FlyQuest. They're potentially one bad fight away from losing the game. And, and Baron is, is going to be up way quicker than that. Yeah. 40 seconds, so you just go your reset, go back out to Baron. This time around, the critical nature of the turn, using Fog of War to make sure you're going to land that CC and have the follow-up seismic shove. FlyQuest have still been up a decent amount of gold the entire game, but the fact that Team Liquid have found such crucial fights while in a gold deficit just goes to show that Team Liquid still have a chance to close out this game if they find the right fight. Absolutely, I mean, they're, they're one fight away from winning the game, right? This is how it comes. You know, this late into the game with two open inhibitors, if you have a wave and you win a 5v5, GG, that's it. It doesn't matter if FlyQuest was winning for 90% of it um, because TL have kept themselves in, have been able to give themselves a real shot to win this game. And now both teams here playing through mid, trying to be able to control that mid lane to look for an angle to move to Baron, to look for an angle to go for that dragon. And it's FlyQuest who gets control as APA was answering that top wave. And they're going to have that first move to clear out some of this vision. Remember what Fudge said in the lounge, that the first game might be the most important for that mental momentum. And with how long this game has gone, with how back and forth it has been between these two teams. That just might ring true at the end of this game. Stretch line does connect on the Jensen. Chain of Corruptions is caught by Inspired. APA is caught in the middle as Inspired blocks him on the route. Whippo is trying to zone off Yon as the backside. APA is taken out of the fight. Masu can now just free hit. The rest of Team Liquid are getting eviscerated. This is a FlyQuest win, surely. FlyQuest have done it. That's an ace for nothing. A quadra kill for Masu to clean it up. They all piled in on the rookie, but they couldn't take him down. And FlyQuest made him pay. FlyQuest are able to endure the back and forth fights, the challenges by Team Liquid in the opening of this series. But game one belongs to FlyQuest, and they will go up 1-0. Double quadra kills. Uh, in the game here for Masu. That's going to help out with some of the confidence for the rookie for playoffs. Mm -hmm. First ever LCS playoff game there for Masu. 
Not bad. Two quadra kills, 11 kills on the Glista. Was a rough start for their yeah. bot lane in that 2v2, but they were able to claw back. A really dominant performance in the early game from the top side there from FlyQuest. Did get shaky in some moments. TL were able to punish some mistakes, absolutely. But I think we saw a preview of what's going to be a really fun series. It's looking like it's going to be an absolute slugfest. And there's just been so much trash talk back and forth. They're hitting APA with the nice charms to end the game. <laughs> the the check-ins on the all chat already have been fire. I'm yeah. very excited for the entire series. Yeah, we're going to see if APA and the rest of Team Liquid are keeping up the trash talk or FlyQuest are going to dominate. But a reminder that Fantasy LCS is happening over on Sleeper, y'all. So make sure you lock in your picks and bands for next week's games if you want to top your league. With that, let's head on over to the LCS Lounge to break that one down. Welcome back to the lounge. A lot of craziness in the mid game, which we'll talk about later. But since we have Fudge today, this game did originally break open in the top lane. So we have Fudge to explain to us. Uh, I'll be piloting the camera here. Fudge is going to explain to us what's happening. We need to pull my computer up into the main feed here. We ha there we go. So this is the very beginning of the game. Yeah. Uh, at a minute 24, talk us through what happens here at the beginning. So if you actually look at the RE uh, right now, so basically the, the plan for TL this game was to look for bot lane sums early game, possibly a kill, and yep. to path down with Xin to possibly look for a gank. Um, I think the early game would have been quite hard for bot lane if they don't get this off. So uh, APA does that. Aatrox leashes so that Xin Zhao's faster to the bot side. And then Aatrox ends up taking a really, really bad trade at level one. And in this matchup, you're very scared of getting Dove at level three if you don't know where their jungler is and your jungler's not pathing up. So right now, he's completely scared of getting Dove at level three. Maybe you can zoom out a little bit. Um, <laughs> he's very scared of getting Dove at level three right now um, from a jungler just coming through Tribush. So he has to base and TP at level two. And after this, uh, Renekton just proxies yep. this wave. And then he proxies the next wave on the map that's coming, uh, fifth wave. And then after this, uh, there's going to be a cannon wave. Um, yep. Renekton can just base here because he kills the wave really early and Aatrox wants to try to kill this wave right here, right? In the middle of the lane, but he cannot because uh, it's a cannon wave, right? So then he just pulls the wave, tries to deny as many minions as possible. Renekton comes back, wins another trade. Yep. Now Renekton has TP advantage. Um, at this point, Aatrox is already completely uh, yeah, and this is a bit. This is a big point where you think there was also a misplay here upcoming. Uh, yeah, so Aatrox wants to just keep full HP right now so that he's under no threat of dive. Um, and then he walks up and takes a bad trade. The first initial trade, if you actually go back, was actually quite good by Aatrox because he forces Renekton to queue the entire wave to push in. Right now, Renekton's just slow pushing and it's going to just be like, he's going to lose a lot of minions. Right now, he's yep. forcing Renekton to queue the entire wave. So now the wave will push in faster. He's going to lose minions. He's going to get more minions, right? Um, he shouldn't be taking an extra trade like this with the extra order queue. Yeah. Uh, and then after this, um, obviously he's scared of getting dove, his jungle has to come up. Uh, and now Renekton can just base TP back to lane and it's a slow push into the enemy Renekton right now. Their jungler needs to come top to try to defend him, but it's Renekton Sejuani, right? So Sejuani can just come like this, is gonna come like this into top lane. Uh, right now, I think Renekton probably just says, just come top lane and we'll win 2v2 on the bounce. Um, realistically, Renekton can probably 1v2 them, to be honest here, with his ultimate uh, against Renekton. Renekton against Aatrox Zinza is completely lost. Yep. And now, top lane is completely over. He has no teleport, and he's missing every plate. They have constant plays on top lane because yep. Renekton's full wave position and wave control. And they just keep slow pushing top lane and diving top lane on every wave, yep. which they did later. What I liked is while we were watching the game, we were at this state right after he teleported back, and you were like, yeah, top lane's doomed. Yeah. Like you could see it from that moment because there were no good choices by impact. So thank you for that, Fudge. Uh, the rest of the game, though, was a little bit, a little bit of a banger. Yeah, so it should have been easy. Yeah, at that it point, was right? a good game. <laughs> it was. I liked it. What happened for that game to be in flux? I mean, I feel like Whippo played pretty well uh, overall. I mean, he made a little bit of a misplay. I think the Baron was probably the biggest like turning point where the game should have just been over when they got the Baron and they kind of misplayed the team fight. Yeah. Another thing that was happening, it was like. A typical like solo queue race between top lane and bot lane, <laughs> where Busio and Masu were having a horrific uh, uh, laning phase. I guess it stemmed from the level one, yeah. but they ended up getting 2v2'd, and so you had a three kill bot lane Varus uh, versus what was a pretty fed Renekton. Um, so that was always now from that point forward, Team Liquid is locking down Drakes. Uh, we're challenging uh, FlyQuest to take the fight on second or third Drake. So it was like they had a, a lane to play through at least. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think the the big thing to me was obviously Bwipo ended up making such a massive difference in a lot of these fights when it did come down to like, okay, we are 5v5ing and TL cannot make a pick. 
Also, Jensen's Talia, obviously, like a lot of the flicks that he was catching. That's been a champ that after, like, we have joked a lot about the Azir nerfing Jensen, etc. But he's performed. This is the second game yep. where I've seen him perform really, really well and make a demonstrable difference in a lot yep. of their So fights. FlyQuest does win game one. They were the favorites, but it does look like we could have a very close series on our hands. It was dicey in game one, but FlyQuest held on. Let's see if TL can get back into the series after the break, where Fudge is going to be joining the caster desk. Yes, sir. Plant? Ari's on oh. the left, okay. Actually, Ari might come from the left side. What? They're looking at the top. I blocked. Ari's on Can we kill the Ari? Can we kill the Ari? Baris, okay. Baris can't hit. Baris can't hit. Ari is dead. Okay. Baris on the I will reach him. I will reach him. I will kill the Baris. Yeah, there is. There is. There is. One minute. Tank for it. Tank for it. Tank for it. Tank for it. It's not easy. You just walk up and get it. Where's your Penta, bro? Two quadras? I don't deserve it. I don't. I can't believe this guy's typing so much. Like, it's actually like I've never seen like a bad player oh, type so much. Blocked. <laughs> nice service. <laughs> That's a good master. I like that from you. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Red Bull gives you wings. Gotta get it, let's work. You were raised on the net, I'm raising my name. 